up everybody, I'm Ari Temkin. In addition to the work that I do here for the Texas Longhorns Football Orange Bloods YouTube channel, you can also catch me on SiriusXM's Big 12 Radio, channel 375. So I figured now would be a good time as Big 12 play starts to get you caught up on everything going on around the Big 12, sort of a Big 12 roundup, if you will. If you have not yet ready, go ahead and hit subscribe on the channel. Also consider ringing the bell, that way you're always notified when we post new videos. And of course, if you like what you watch in this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let's start with Texas Tech, the Longhorns' first opponent to open Big 12 play this upcoming week. And we'll have plenty of preview coverage of this game throughout the week right here on the Texas Longhorns Football Orange Bloods YouTube channel, including we go behind enemy lines with the guest that takes us around Texas Tech and, of course, previewing the game. But Texas Tech is, without a doubt, the most talented roster since Matt Wells has been in Lubbock. Now that doesn't say much because they've been pretty bad over the last three years, but this is a pretty legitimate offensive football team with Tyler Shuck, the transfer from Oregon, Eric Ezekama, who's one of the best receivers in the Big 12, and then a two-headed monster now of Sir Roderick Thompson, who was their leading back last year, but missed the first two weeks and came back this past week. And then Taj Brooks, who's really emerged as a really good back for Texas Tech and had a couple of big games, including one uh, to open up the season against Houston. You look at their schedule, they're 3-0. They haven't played great teams, but they did open the season against the University of Houston at Energy Stadium. So, tough game on the road against a really good group of five opponent that they beat coming from behind to win. This is not a walkover game for Texas. They cannot do what they did after the Louisiana game and let their guard down in a game against Arkansas. They've got, obviously, TCU and Oklahoma forthcoming beyond Texas Tech. Cannot overlook a Red Raider team that nearly beat them last year, and this is a much more talented outfit for Texas Tech. The major surprise team right now in the Big 12 is Kansas State. The Kansas State Wildcats are 3-0. Kansas State started off the year with a really impressive win over Stanford 24-7 at AT&T Stadium, which didn't look like a great win until the following week when Stanford beat USC and then got USC's coach fired. Then the next week, Kansas State barely hung on in order to beat and survive against a Southern Illinois team that's an FCS school. But part of the reason that they barely won that game was because starting quarterback Skylar Thompson, who's a sixth-year senior who missed last season with an injury, got injured in this game. And Will Howard, who played the majority of the games for Kansas State last year, had to come in. And he looked like he was not ready to, to come in for Skylar Thompson, who is not out for the year and could actually be back as early as next week for K-State as they uh, take on Oklahoma State. But if not this week, perhaps next week. Now, the more impressive win for K-State was the one that they just had against the Nevada team that as a group of five program has arguably the best quarterback in college football in Carson Strong and certainly the guy that is the presumptive top quarterback picked in the upcoming NFL draft, which is pretty crazy. A great receiving court, great running game. This is a game in which Nevada was actually favored in the game and yet Kansas State beat him pretty handily, 38-17. to And they did this behind a dynamic rushing attack led by Round Rock's Deuce Vaughn, who is, continues to be fantastic. Um, and then the two-headed monster of both Vaughn and Joe Irvin as they racked up yardage, especially in the fourth quarter. This game was 17-17 late, and Kansas State put it on ice by absolutely dominating Nevada in the running game. Oklahoma State is 3-0, not a huge surprise there. Maybe the biggest surprise of Oklahoma State is how they're doing it. They're doing it with elite level defense, and an offense that right now has been pedestrian. Now they came up with a win to start the season against Missouri State, and then they beat Tulsa, not the most impressive wins in the world. But follow that up this week with a really nice victory on the road against Boise State. Boise State has a elite level offense with Hank Bachmeyer, really good running game, really good receivers. Um, and this game was interesting because all the scoring, all 41 points scored in this game were done in the first half. So the defense is really hunkered down in the second half. And it was really Oklahoma State's ground game that got going. Jalen Warren is a name to remember in, in, in terms of the Big 12. We talked about Taj Brooks as being a new Big 12 name to know in the running game. Well, Jalen Warren's that for Oklahoma State. He racked up over 200 rushing yards against Boise State and really provided the only spark of offense that Oklahoma State had throughout this game. Questions were made about Spencer Sanders and how elite or good he could be, but it's worth mentioning that they have a ton of injuries to their wide receiving core. They've got a pretty good wide receiving core, but obviously they're without Tylen Wallace, who moved on to the NFL and has been an elite level back for this team and, and has been an elite level wide receiver for this team. 
And beyond him, there was a bunch of good players that were in position to step up, but most of these guys are injured. So it's a pedestrian offense with a dominant defense at this point in time. We'll see if that offense can come around, and so much of that revolves around Oklahoma State getting healthy at their wide receiver core. Beyond that, Baylor is so far first place in the conference with a 1-0 Big 12 record. They've started off 3-0 with wins over Texas State, Texas Southern, and Kansas. They won two games last year in Dave Aranda's first year. This is definitely a turnaround from a season ago as they've now eclipsed their win total from last season in three weeks. But I don't expect Baylor to win a bunch of Big 12 games beyond the one they just won over Kansas. They have an elite level running game and a good defense. In fact, a really good defense. So kind of like we've talked about with Oklahoma State, really good running game, really good defense. Although the Oklahoma State running game hasn't been good until that Boise State game. But elite level defense, good running game for Baylor. We'll see how much that holds up throughout Big 12 play. But there's no doubt about it. They have a better identity and a focal point in offense that's more in line with their skill set and the players that they have. You've got elite level defenders like Jalen Petrie. And then, of course, Tristan Ebner and Abram Smith is another new name to know about in terms of running the football for the Baylor Bears. The West Virginia Mountaineers are off to a 2-1 and one start. They lost to Maryland to open up the season, then knocked off Long Island University before a really impressive victory over Virginia Tech on Saturday. Now, the victory over Virginia Tech is colored by the fact that they nearly blew a 20-point lead and have not gotten great quarterback play from Jarrett Dagey. When under pressure, Daigie's been really bad, and so teams have been sending extra pressure, and he's been bad. Daigie threw a late pick in that game, and it really cost West Virginia the football game. Now, they've been working in redshirt freshman Garrett Green at quarterback, who gives them a lot more upside. This is a four-star recruit that certainly, again, looks to be one of the future pieces to the West Virginia offense. But at this point, they trust Jarrett Daigie to throw more, and Garrett Green comes in as sort of a, a running back, running quarterback, dual threat kind of guy though we haven't really seen him throw the football much. So it'll be interesting to see how that continues to progress throughout Big 12 play. But West Virginia should have been much better offensively this year. They just need to really get consistency from their passing game. And when you look at that Virginia Tech game, they really had to hold on late to survive, and their defense came up with stops in order to do it. I don't think West Virginia is much of a real threat in the Big 12 this season. One team that I do think is a real threat in the Big 12 this season is TCU. TCU was off this week. They're 2-0. and But the number one thing that stands out to me about TCU is their explosive offense. They've got arguably the best quarterback of the Big 12 right now in Max Duggan. They've got Zachary Evans, the five-star highest-rated player to ever commit to TCU out of North Shore High School in the Houston area. He's been elite through the first couple of games this season, including what he did last week against Cal. And then Quinton Johnston on the outside is one of the best wide receivers in college football that you've never heard about. This is a legitimate X receiver, great target for Max Duggan, and has been lived, living up to the billing coming into the season in terms of expectations for Johnston. You look at the three-headed monster of Duggan, Johnston, and Zach Evans, and you've got an explosive offense that has a long-term potential in this conference. What we've seen so far, TCU has the best offense in the Big 12, better than what Oklahoma has shown so far. The defense, amazingly, has not been great. They gave up a ton of yards and a ton of points and had to survive late against Chase Garbers and the Kale Golden Bears. And again, they were off this week before they play next week for the Iron Skillet against SMU, which would be a great game between Max Duggan and former Oklahoma quarterback Tanner Mordecai before TCU welcomes Texas to Fort Worth a week from Saturday. Now, before we get to Oklahoma, bring up Kansas. The over-under for Kansas in terms of wins this year is one and a half. They have won which they earned their first win since 2019 to start the year against South Dakota before they got absolutely boat raced by both Coastal Carolina and Baylor. Now they do have Duke this week, so maybe this is where they hit the over. And this is certainly a program on the rise. And when I say on the rise, I mean from buried deep within the earth and rock bottom. Lance Leipold is going to turn this program around. I don't know what that means, but at the very least, they should be getting to a point within the next season or so in which they're covering three touchdown spreads consistently in the Big 12. Until further notice, though, never pick Kansas to cover a spread in the Big 12. Last week was the best example. They were 17-point underdogs against Baylor and lost 45-7. to Easy money. Jason Bean is their quarterback. He's from Mansfield. He's a transfer from North Texas. Both he and Lance Leipold have only been on campus for about two months. So there's some talent there for Kansas, but... Again, over-under win totals one. 
They may eclipse that with a victory over Duke on Saturday. We'll see. But it's going to be difficult to believe they can win any Big 12 games this year. Let's get to Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Sooners, the presumptive favorites, still a top five team in the AP Associated Press poll, and a favorite to win the national championship. And through three games, they haven't played really anybody, and they have not looked very good at all. You start off with their first game against Tulane, where they blew a big lead and then had to hold on late. And then you go to a game against Nebraska that they just were able to squeak by in Nebraska. And some interesting comments by quarterback Spencer Rattler after this game in talking about the way that Nebraska would set up defensively in what looked like a man uh, coverage, only to then back into his zone, which Spencer said confused him, which is an interesting quote from a guy that's a Heisman Trophy frontrunner to start the season. Now, I know he no longer is, but you can't, if you're misidentifying zone and man coverage or they're camouflaging what looks like man to be zone, these are things that elite level quarterbacks have to be able to overcome within the scope of the game. And if he's telling you that he can't totally understand that, then defensive coordinators in the Big 12 are going to be game planning to stop that. Now, what we've seen from Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma's offense right now is something we've never seen before since Lincoln has been at Oklahoma as the head coach. I mean, it, it's, it is a pedestrian offense that's not consistent, that doesn't have many big plays, that is just not anywhere near what we thought it would be and anywhere near what any of Lincoln Riley's offenses have been like. Maybe there's some confusion in terms of what defenses are doing to Spencer Rattler. I'm not entirely certain, but Spencer did start the year very slow last year before picking it up. So I don't expect Oklahoma to be this pedestrian all season, but it's just interesting to see at this point. We'll see if they got it fixed by the Red River shootout game here in a couple of weeks. But defensively, they've got some problems in the back end of their defense. They're elite up front. They probably have the best defensive line in the Big 12, but in the back end of their defense, they're not great in coverage. They can be beaten. There were some big plays that Nebraska had through the air against the secondary of Oklahoma that's not as great as the front end of their defense. So we'll see if that front end can apply more pressure, which could create more opportunities in the back end for turnovers, um, et cetera. But this conference is wide open. And so even though Texas has a disappointing loss to Arkansas, all of their goals and beyond goals in terms of potentially winning a Big 12 championship, still right in front of them. And as much as college football seems to be in the air right now in terms of no dominant teams, the Big 12 is very much in line with that too. Say TCU and Oklahoma are the two best teams in the conference so far with Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and Texas probably right there. And we're about to find out who the real pretenders are and contenders are over the next few weeks. Thanks for checking out today's video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also consider hitting that like or subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you're always notified when we post new videos.